Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. Today we are taking a look at Kaiju number eight, and this is, a, by the way, a Freestyle Friday. And we are going to look at the expert use of a common trope by the creators, which is something they do commonly and wonderfully. The trope here being the friend group with one shared brain cell. In this trope, the concept is that you have a friend group of people who are probably fa individually fairly intelligent people, but when they're together, the intelligence seems to be kind of centered somewhere in between the group outside of their bodies, meaning there's one brain cell between them and they have to take turns with it. Now, the creators of Kaiju Number 8 have created a friend group between Kafka Haibaino, Ichiko Kawa and Kikoru Shinomiya. And you have the kind of embittered 30 year old in Kafka who's broken out of his shell and is finally chasing his dreams. You have the determined young thing straight out of high school in uh, Ichikawa, and he is set up to be a rising star. And of course, you have the pure prodigy in Kikoru. Kikoru. But when you put them together, they really do seem to share a single brain cell. So, the first instance we have, if you look up at the screen, we have Kikoru, Ichikawa, and Kafka together on the battlefield. Kafka has just just saved Kikoru from uh, Kaiju number 9, and has just been scolding her about taking better care of herself. In this case, Kafka clearly has, or rather had, the brain cell of the group, because Ichikawa comes up behind him, revealing to Kikoru that he's in on it, and not gaining much, and in, in, apparently knocking the brain cell out of Kafka. So, Kikoru has been risking her own life with no thought to her own personal safety. Ichikawa risks his half of the secret with no thought to his own personal safety, and Kafka's trying to keep them, keep all three of them alive. But, unfortunately, Ichika seems to appear knocks the brain cell out, because in the, the next time we see the three of them together, Ichikawa clearly has the brain cell. Kafka's staggering along, barely managed to keep to his human form. Kikoru is just flat out cold, and Ichikawa is giving their excuses at the base. This does seem to be his job whenever anything goes down. The next scene is the three after Kikoru has woken up. The three of them are at the diner. And it, it seems to be Ichikawa's turn with the brain cell again. Kikoru is making this the silly comment about unbelievable. Poor people will eat anything in reference to Kafka's transformation. Kafka is taking the bait, even though he is a full-grown man. He's taking the bait of a teenage girl and yelling back at her. I didn't eat it because I wanted to. And Ichikawa is like, can you keep your voices down? Again, Ichikawa does seem to get an ornament amount of time with the brain cell, but he tends to go for it. In the ne the next scene is of course the ba bathroom scene where Ichikawa and Kafka spent so much time chatting about Captain Mi Mina in the bathroom with the other guys that all all of the rest of the male rookies were passed out from the heat. I assume Ichikawa is not passed out. He's, he's still up there taking care of them because he, he his small, scrawny body al allowed him to dissipate the heat faster. But Kikoru is definitely the only one in, char in possession of a brain cell at this moment. Then you have, of course, the time when they're, where they're, she seems to have kept a, ho a hold of it all that time because they're together in the recovery room after Ichikawa got blasted by... Kaiju number nine, and Ka Kafka got diced up by Vice Captain Hoshina, and Kikoru's there wait waiting for them. And in the first scene, you don't see, you don't see much evidence of the brain cell at all. But then Ichikawa just blurts out without even thinking to look if there's anybody else in the room. Thank you for saving me, sir. Therefore, revealing Kafka's secret. Kafka freaks out and doesn't know what to do about it. And it's it's up it's up to the one brain cell in who is it's currently in Kikoru's possession to come up with an excuse for them. Then you have the big scene where the wyverns attack, and you've got all three of them together. Kikoru is in full possession of the brain cell at this moment. 
And she, during, back and forth before the scene, she was passing it off between her and Ichikawa. Kafka's running about, ready to transform into kaiju number eight at the slightest, at the slightest provocation. And they're trying to keep him from doing that. At this moment, Kikoru definitely has the brain cell while she outlines in clear sentences how they're going to prevent Kafka from needing to transform by taking care of this themselves. And she gives Kafka something to do to keep him safe and occupied until it's his turn with the brain cell again. And then, oh boy. Okay, up till now, all six of these examples have been fairly humorous. An example of the artist really playing around with this trope. You know, you've got the three friends and they've got one shared brain cell between them. And in the seventh example, it's Kafka's turn with the brain cell again. And Kikoru has just broken down. And it's a very heartbreaking scene. This is Kafka's saved the entire base from the Yoju bomb. And Ichikawa's thrown caution to the wind. He's rushing forward. You have no idea what he's going to do. Is he going to attack Mina? That'll not do any good. Is he going to re reveal that he's been in on the secret, therefore blowing his half of the secret when Kafka might protect him? And Kafka's just thinking, he, he knows that Kikoru's going to shut down, and he's just saying, forgive me. And he knows that Ichikawa is probably rushing to his rescue, but yeah. Kafka, despite the beating he took, is clearly the only one in possession of the brain cell at this moment. And so, I hate to end on such a depressing note, but it's going to be sometime before the next chapter comes out, but it gets closer every day. That is my Freestyle Friday, looking at the one shared brain cell between the three friends in this friend group. So, if, if you'd like something to keep you going until the next chapter comes out, go check out the links in the description below for something to laugh at humans are weird i have the data in which case the entire human race appears to share one brain cell between them and it and it's and it's never anybody's day for it and if you want to break your heart over something check out dying embers dragons aliens and things that go boom in the night i also have a range of fun journals lined and unlined if you want to make your own records of human weirdness check those out on amazon and if you're interested in buying the book and not and do you don't want to buy it from Amazon, it's available. The book, the Humans Are Weird book, is available from Kobo by Rakuten, which is basically Walmart. It's available from Google Play Books and it's available from Barnes and Noble. And if you want a, a, an original first printing signed author copy, just email me at the email on my website, and I'll see and I'll see what I can do about getting you one. So, peace out, my wonderful viewers. The book from author Betty Adams, Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data, is a humorous look at human behavior through the eyes of aliens. This book is arranged in separate reports or essays, documenting the experiences with humanity through the lens of the aliens who have to interact with them. This anthology of short stories and vignettes from alien points of view highlights some of humanity's quirks we can all relate to. Author Betty Adams captures how strange and interesting humans can really be. This is a fun collection of stories you will really get a kick out of. Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data from author Betty Adams. Order your copy right now on Amazon.